Rodney from I Can Play here and here for another segment of Having Yarn on the Farm where we get out to farms and we talk about all things agricultural related and I'm here with a very special guest down in Stanthorpe. As a lot of you know uh, from a lot of my podcasts, Stanthorpe's a place that's very dear to my heart and a place that I spend a lot of time. I've been coming to Stanthorpe uh, ever since I was a kid. I did my work experience down here picking capsicums back in 1994. And I'm here with the member for Southern Downs of Stanthorpe, Mr. James Lister. James, thanks G'day. for having the arm with us, mate. see you, Rodney. Um, James, I, I haven't met you until today. Um, I followed you on, on Facebook. Uh, you are probably one of the most passionate, prolific, boots on the ground, local members I've ever seen. I, I say to a lot of people down here, I'm actually envious of uh, the representation they have. You you come from a background of um, Air Force, I think, if yeah. memory serves me correct. So uh, that would have put you in good stead to uh, move into the fight of politics because you've, you're in there fighting for the region every day. Well, look, you know, uh, politics is politics. I try to leave it in Brisbane and just fight for the uh, little stuff for little people across the board here and that seems to be the best way to get things done. Well, we talk about the board and then we talk about board earth. Um, that's something, the last month you've, uh, we've had a tough time down here in Stanthorpe. Uh, I've had a couple of clients that uh, employed workers that were on the other side of the border and when the Palaget government closed the borders, um, they were stuck over there and didn't have the workers come over. Um, it's been a tough time the last month with regard to border closures. Yeah, it has, Rodney. We've, um when the border closes, um, people understand the necessity for that, but it's the way it's done that's important. And um, my concern all along over the last 18 months or two years has been we need more border crossings so that those who are entitled to cross the border can do so but don't have to travel too far. And we need exemption arrangements that reflect how our communities and how our economies really work. So, as you said, there are uh, a workforce that doesn't recognise the border. Uh, they move to where the work is. Uh, and props like this, this box toy here at, at Gray and Nance's place, um, it doesn't wait, it's got to be done, and the labour needs to be there to do it. That labour is important to our local economy, it's important to producing the food that feeds us. I think one of the biggest misconceptions is there's borders and there's the borders. You can't compare the border at the Gold Coast with the border at Stanthorpe. They're chalk and cheese. Yeah, they're absolutely. The um, Gold Coast border is a highly populated one. You know, there's uh, probably a couple of million people between Coolangatta and Brisbane. Um, here in Southern Downs, at places like uh, Stanthorpe up in Kalani, uh, you know, Texas and, and Gundawindi, um, there are special um, industries there, some are grains, some are cattle, some are horticulture, uh, and there's a very small population on both sides, and movement across is necessary, especially when there's no COVID uh, in the areas with New South Wales that we need to move across for. One of, the, one of the biggest issues a few of my growers have faced living in a border town is they've got a farm on this side of the border and then they've got a farm at Tenerfield. Yeah. Um, I was with a client yesterday that's a, a large apple grower and we're working a succession plan for labour for this year and he says to me, well Rodney, what succession plan do we have in place if the Palaget government slams the border shut again, how am I going to get you know, my my apples picked on the other side? You're talking five k's down the road, like it's, it is ludicrous isn't it? It affects investment, mm. so um, obviously these growers work extremely hard, they invest their own money with no guaranteed outcome no. so that they can create a living for their families and employ people. And that generates taxes that pays for our nurses and our teachers and our police and so forth. So it's important to recognise that they need certainty. You know, that certainty you're, you're talking about that isn't there. Uh, it discourages investment, it discourages employment. And we've got a lot of public servants to pay in Queensland. We do know? have a lot of public servants and, to pay. And, and they're I, being paid for by, by the people who grow, you know, our fruit and veg. Without a doubt. And I think that uh, one of the biggest problems I've seen um, at the moment and uh, I think what farmers are crying out for is a little bit of consistency and a little bit of transparency and we're not getting that. Um, a lot of my growers at the moment are, you know, and we look at Stanthorpe. Stanthorpe is an area that's had two years of really hard times with torrential drought, okay, and farmers have, have lost a lot of money. They've lost a lot of money over the last two years. Um, they've been cutting in water. I know one grower um, that was cutting in water at $10,000 a week just to keep his crop alive. Well, all of a sudden the heavens are opened, we've got water, um, you look at this crop here, it's looking fantastic. We now face the issue of, you know, these growers aren't looking for, to make money, they're looking to repay debt of the last two years. Yes. Um, how do we find a labour force that can, uh, that can pick this crop? Because it just seems to me, when it comes to agriculture, the current Labour government, it's not a priority for them. Well, look, as I say, I tend not to get political, but I do agree with you there. 
Uh, well, I mean, we, I, I find it's very hard to, to get my foot in the door to discuss uh, plans for border closures and arrangements and so forth. So if I don't have the answer, I can certainly talk to the people around here. They'll tell me quick smart what will and what won't work for border closure. But the government won't include uh, members of parliament who represent border areas from Coolangatta all the way through Southern Downs and right out to the, to the west because we're not on the same party as them, you know, and I think that's that's unfortunate. They make decisions without the benefit of local input and it ends up costing everyone, um, and particularly it's growers like Brian Nance who sort of pay the price for that. You talk about party politics and one of the biggest things that, uh, you know, I, I try not to get political, or it's hard not to when you see um, the issues that are facing. I come from up in the Moreton Bay region and uh, up in the Moreton Bay, we've got the member for Pumastone, which spends her days on Facebook, bagging Scott Morrison, bagging Scott Morrison, does nothing for the area but bag Scott Morrison because she's from that faction of the party that, you know, obviously is uh, attached to Labor. And then you go 20 k's down the road to Glasshouse and you've got a fantastic local member there who you'd know in Andrew Powell. Yeah, he's a good guy. And Andrew's, you ask any farmer in Glasshouse about Andrew Powell and they'll, I guarantee you, nearly every single one of them will say, mate, he's been out to my farm or I've had a chat with him or he's out there fighting, you know, I've, I've seen videos of Andrew in Parliament fighting for, for growers, fighting for labour issues. How do we get everyone on the same page, regardless of what political party you're in, and get on the same page to try and solve these problems? Because it just seems to me there's a lot of bureaucracy, a lot of finger pointing. Um, you know, federal and state are at war. Um, and the farmers seem to be suffering as, as casualties of that war. Yeah, I think the answer just to be straight to you, say it as it is. Communicate to the government uh, what your concerns are. And whenever I write to the Premier or the Chief Health Officer um, or the Health Minister, I put it on my Facebook page so everyone can see what I've said. Um, I try not to uh, be political about it, but at the end of the day, it's the job of people like me to make representations to the state government to make the border closure work as, as well as possible. You know, and, and it's really hurt our communities when poor decisions have been made because they haven't taken advice. Well, there's a, there's a lot of, you know, obviously um, capital investment that needs to to go into planting a crop like this and you know you need lead time yeah. you can't you know at the moment in Stanthorpe you've got a lot of growers this week deciding whether or not they should plant tomatoes or capsicums and how many they should plant and surety of labour plays such an important part mm. in making those decisions because there's no use going and planting a crop if you, you've got no chance of picking it mm. um, so at the moment what I guess farmers in Stanthorpe are crying out for is a little bit of stability and a little bit of transpar transparency and making sure goalposts don't continually get changed because that's what seems to happen. Yeah, it, it does seem to happen and I think the uh, decisions are made and they're announced and in between time uh, stakeholders have been consulted. So if you, for instance, preparing to um, produce crops just over the other side of the water from where we are here and the water slams shut, uh, any investment you've made in preparing that uh, is gone. You know, if you had a, uh, a crop in, it would help you, you know, because you're not going to pick it, certainly not at the start when they have an eye on all of the exemptions and, and bubble processes and so forth. So, you know, it's it's very tough and I'd ask the, uh, the state government to make sure that they consider us. Um, you know, we we, um, uh, we know that they want us an election and they want extra seats on the basis of keeping us safe. And it doesn't mean that they can ignore the people who are keeping us fit. I think that's a very, very good point. And, you know, I I think that, you know, am I a, an Anastasia Palaszczuk supporter? No, I'm not. Um, however, you can't argue the fact that she has kept us safe. Okay, she has kept us safe. We're living a life a lot more with less restrictions than, um, you know, say New South Wales or Victoria at the moment. However, um, we need to take one step forward and say, okay, agriculture is the food hub. We feed the country. Mm -hmm. And in Queensland, where we're such a big primary producer, it just defies logic why we're not getting a little bit more exposure. I think what's comforting for farmers is uh, the new uh, opposition leader, David Christopoli, is a the son of a cane farmer yeah. and a lot of the guys in Stanthorpe say oh well he's from Italian descent so are we and he's well, the son of a farmer he so are we. last week he'll be here in another two weeks. And... I know he loves the area yeah. um, I um, I think I read up he actually had his 40th birthday down here. He did actually um, it's an interesting story about how uh, he was uh, having a, a, a barbecue with, uh, with the, the mayor and the mayor was chopping up a bit of firewood and uh, 
chopped the end of his finger off. Oh, really? Uh, but, uh, <laughs> but being a, a strong Sicilian type, uh, Rick Panisi, he just went on and uh, uh, got better everything done, and only then went to the hospital to, to see if he could, <laughs> see if he could stitch his finger up. <laughs> I think David's going is is a very progressive, strong leader. Um, he's certainly been out there getting his message across, and uh, growers are taking a lot of comfort in knowing that he. You know, comes from a son of a farmer background and I think he gets farming and he understands the problems. Um, something I think is lacking on the labour side at the moment, there just doesn't seem to be the exposure. We have a, a monstrous labour crisis at the moment. Um, we've been fighting quarantine with the Chief Health Officer um, for the last 12 months. Um, there's a lot of quarantine restrictions about bringing workers in. I mean, the, we look at the seasonal worker program the federal government started one-way travel with Vanuatu. Like there's no there's no COVID in Vanuatu, zero. Hasn't been for two years. So the federal government went and said, okay, we'll quarantine in Vanuatu um, and then you can bring them here and they don't have to quarantine. Now, Adelaide's the only country, South Australia's the only state that took that up. Queensland didn't want to have a bar of it. Um, meanwhile, you know, we've got crops rotting on the ground and the current state government is just clueless to the fact that how bad this problem is. Yeah, look, uh, it, it's just a lack of understanding. I think uh, the, the government doesn't have any farmers sitting around their cabinet table, which would be quite different if David Christopher were premier, because we'd have people from the land, people from rural areas, people from west of the Great Dividing Range who instinctively understand the needs um, of our communities. Um, so um, obviously we're not going to have that for the next three years while we've got the fellow show up. Yeah. But that doesn't mean that they uh, they shouldn't be listening to us when we uh, provide advice about how things should be done. Well, I, I, I don't want to embarrass you, but you know, obviously I talk to a lot of growers and one of the things that um, that a lot of growers do say to me with regards to the Southern Downs electorate and in particular yourself, James, is you give the growers time to understand, understand the problems and try and find amicable, amicable solutions. Um, that's something that's sorely lacking at the moment is, I think, I, I've always been an advocate of the farmers not getting the uh, the awareness at the moment of this labour crisis. It is a huge crisis at the moment, you know, astronomical. On this farm here right now, you know, last week, they killed off three quarters of the baby bok choy because they had no one to pick it. Mm. Um, that's, that's how tragic. bad. And these stories don't get told because, um, you know, you've just met Nancy. She's now on the track to spraying. She's um, she's doing this, she's doing that. She ain't got time to complain, mm. you know. And what we need to do is raise awareness of this labor crisis and we need to find amicable solutions. And with regards to the borders, we need to have some sort of stability, whereas we can bring workers into the state for agriculture um, back when they had the the first border closure, you could bring workers across the border for agriculture. Um, that needs to be re-looked at because as it stands right now, I know of 50, 60 workers in Coffs Harbour that are finishing up on blueberries that would love to come to Stanthorpe, but they can't because the border's shut. Mm -hmm. Well, look, um, when there's no one to pick the crop, as you say, the crop doesn't happen, it either gets turfed or not planted. And that hurts our community here as well, because as you know, those workers um, who make a good, good money while they're in, in stands up doing that kind of stuff, they spend it at the pizza shop at the IGA, at the cafe, at the RSL, and that contributes to employment and it keeps our economy going strong. I think on a town like Stanthorpe, and whether you look at Stanthorpe or Ayr or Gatton or Bundaberg or any of these areas, if the farming sector's going well, the town's going well mm. because if the farmer's making money he's reinvesting that money into the town um, if the workers are here and they're working I mean you look at 12 18 months ago pre-COVID when there was a lot of backpackers in Stanthorpe if you went to Stanthorpe RSL at night for a steak three quarters of the Stanthorpe RSL was filled with backpackers because they're earning good money mm. they had a disposable income they didn't want to cook after they'd worked all day so they were down having a steak at the Ari um, you're going to the RSL now and they'd be lucky to be two, three tables because uh, all those backpackers are gone. Um, it really hurts the town when that labor force is not here because the whole town suffers, not just the ag sector. Mm, it, that's right, yeah. Our, the Granville community thrives on agriculture. A lot of the businesses uh, in Stanthorpe are there to support um, the annual influx of workers that, to pick the crops, bring them in. Uh, and without those people, without those pay packets in town, it does hurt. I mean, tourism is doing well um, to some extent, but um, it doesn't replace the hundreds and hundreds of pay packets that get spent in Stanford every week when we're picking, we've got the labour force we need. A lot of our farmers will say to me that they believe that 
the farmers are getting ignored at the moment by the state government. The state government is, you know, focusing on other areas and the farmers are getting ignored. I mean, I know yourself, because you've been thrown out of parliament, you're probably, <laughs> you're a prolific advocate for the farmer and you don't take a backward step. How do we get the state government to listen to the problems that we've got right now because you ask any farmer they say the state government's just not listening well look you're you're a good start Rodney I mean these uh, the, um, videos that you do you get a growing audience of people who are becoming aware of the challenges that we face and uh, it's all about numbers you know if we can um, get the message out there that our communities need the government to listen and need to make decisions that enable us to have our, our workforce without necessarily uh, impacting how we're dealing with COVID and keeping it, you know, on that side of the border. Um, that, that's what we need. So uh, I think uh, the government is very political. You know, they go where they think the votes are. And uh, I think because they've won the last election and picked up seats because Anastasia kept the it fear, safe. The fear campaign. Yeah, yeah. that those, it um, uh, doesn't mean they, they should stop listening to us. Um, but I think um, to a large extent they have. I, there just isn't that. Um, that uh, primary industries knowledge and focus at the camper table. Uh, you know, I, I just think we need to have guys like Pat Weir. You know, um, like um, you know, we've got um, our, our shadow agriculture minister is actually a, a, a beef producer. You know, yeah, so he knows uh, so farming. He yeah, knows, yeah, and that's the difference. Yeah. Um, so uh, there needs to be a focus for everyone in the state, not just of service to that. Uh, and we do employ a lot of people who contribute a lot of money to the economy and. A lot of livelihoods in the communities that I represent depend upon this, so it is real. One of the biggest issues if you talk to growers, especially growers trying to bring in workers under the Seasonal Worker Program or the Pacific Labor Scheme, um, they seem to be getting hamstrung a lot by the Chief Health Officer at the moment. Uh, I don't understand how it all works, but is it my under... It's, is the Chief Health Officer supposed to be an impartial person? Because it just seems to me she's very close to the current government. Well, it's essential that the uh, Chief Health Officer um, be obviously independent, I think. Uh, and um, I I'm not sure that it has always been obvious that that's the case. Um, I'm not suggesting any impropriety, of course, but she appears with the Premier every day. You see her at events, which some of which are, are, are largely political in character. Mm -hmm. um, I've appreciated when uh, the Chief Health Officer has uh, spoken with me about um, issues on the border. Um, I had a teleconference with her last year, which was very helpful in organising things. But um, I still find that I'm not being consulted. Um, it's just the border control industry, of course. I mean, uh, uh, for the West, we've got huge rain crops on both sides of the border. Correct. Um, there won't be the storage capacity for the buffer crop in New South Wales. Much of it will have to come to Queensland to the silos here to get railed out um, to uh, the Port Brisbane for export. Now, if there aren't enough border crossings or they're not in the right places, that hamstrings our industry. Um, and, uh, you know, I'd love to be in the Chief Health Officer's ear or in the, the Premier's ear, as I've written them several times, to re reinforce that message. Um, and uh, I seldom get a reply uh, and even less seem to get uh, any action. And that must be disheartening for you, James, as someone that, you know, you're elected by the people for the people to represent the people. and you're not getting a reply um it's pretty hard for you to do your job with your hands tied behind your back yeah look look it is it's pretty hard i'm very fortunate um you know in my office i've got um virginia and uh, and ian who know the border issue but backwards they know it better than me because every day they're fighting for individual people with the premier's office with the health minister's office um, on issues of exemptions on issues of uh, border crossing for industry and so forth um you know uh, i do the the um, representation and so forth, mm -hmm. um, but um, uh, yeah, look, we just need uh, more emphasis to be placed on us, not lip service. We need need to be listened to, and we're entitled to be listened to. I think what we need is just some clarity and consistency. Um, you know, I, I got in touch with your office when I had a I had a friend of mine that uh, bought a specialised engineer out from Finland that. Um, that what he does is does repairs and software updates on tomato graders. Now he was down in Tasmania, he um, uh, did some upgrades there. Now he's the only person in Australia that could do this upgrade and he had to come into Ballanding to Benson and Hines to do a software upgrade for them. Um, if he went back to Finland, it'd be another year or two before he could come back and he's the only person that could do it. Um, he was sitting in Armadale for two weeks trying to get an exemption, they wrote everyone bar the Pope and got ignored. Um, you know, 
it's that in times of crisis, what we need is we need people to be accessible and we don't need to be ignored. And I think that's probably the biggest issue talking to farmers is they feel their voice is not getting heard. And hopefully with this new Chief Health Officer coming in, he comes in with a fresh approach and he comes in with an impartial approach and he comes in with uh, a little bit more consistency in the decisions that he makes. Well, that's imp important. Um, ultimately, um, the Premier can devolve or, or, or uh, hand down tasks and delegate decisions but she can't delegate the responsibility. She's responsible. Uh, and uh, I noticed that when things aren't going well, she doesn't do a press conference that day. Or no, she no. Show her face, you know, and uh, uh, I think people are entitled to say to themselves, how come that strictly essential uh, technician who was going to do essential maintenance on um, a capital equipment, which provides jobs and income for this district, how that was, and how he couldn't get support. I was talking to a fellow um, who was stuck at the border. I had to talk him down from suicide mm. uh, and until the police could get there because he'd been delayed um, for so long in getting a decision on whether he could uh, travel to Queensland for some very essential purposes. So, um, you know, uh, we just need more emphasis on making decisions, making good decisions, and less on having a big media unit to craft the message every Correct. day. Correct. So uh, the I media mean, capitalise on the disaster. My mate rang me up and he said, look, Rod, he said, what do I do? How do I get this guy across the border? I said, put him in a footy jersey. I said, put him in a footy jersey, give him a football, because if you're a footy player or a footy player's wife, mate, you get brought straight in. And no, nobody um, could be, you, you could forgive anybody for pointing to that as being a, a, a grossly inappropriate um, you know, exemption or grossly inappropriate action. The government has um, looked at that and, and, uh, uh, and pushed it through while we've got uh, good people who have a far more genuine need to get across the border for always. And that's the biggest issue. And that's, can I tell you something, James, talking bluntly, that's what pisses people off, is that there's no consistency. Yeah. And I guess all they want is consistency and a fair go. Um, mate, we're lucky down here in a border town, we've got someone like James Lister that's out there <laughs> fighting the good fight. Although, um, you know, keep fighting it, mate. And uh, I guess all we can do is hope that as the vaccination rates get higher, um, there's a little bit more clarity in what we're doing. And border towns like Stanthorpe are so critical. I mean, this is a food bowl. We grow tomatoes, we grow capsicums, we grow grapes, we grow stone fruit, we grow apples, you know, we grow bok choy, you name it. Down here in Stanthorpe, we grow it. Um, although there's one thing to grow it, it's another thing to pick it. And we've got to find solutions and labor solutions need to be sorted and sorted out pretty pretty quickly. We're lucky we've got a federal minister in Minister Little Proud is also the Minister for Agriculture. Yeah. So uh, we're in good stead with a uh, federal minister in David and uh, a local member in yourself. Um, consistency and clarity, that's what we need, mate. And um, I want to thank you on behalf of all the farmers in Stanthorpe for, for having a chat with us. But more importantly, I want to thank you for fighting the good fight that you do every day because I, I see how prolific you are on Facebook. And even in that time of crisis when the borders shut, and everyone was looking for counsel with regards to specialised ag and they had no one to turn to. Um, you were out there giving constant updates and, and fighting the good fight. And I think that's, if we had more people in parliament like you, James, uh, more people willing to roll up their sleeves and fight for their people rather than pol local politicians that want to sit there and take pot shots at the government, I think that uh, we'd be in a much better place. Right. Well, thanks, Rodney. Mate, appreciate thanks for having a chat with us. We appreciate it. James Lister. Federal, uh, sorry, local member for Southern Downs and one of the most hardworking, prolific, on boots on the ground, sitting members of parliament. Thanks for having a chat with us. Thanks, mate. Good on you.